What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very excited today to be joined in studio by a really cool dude who reached out to me actually about a month ago through LinkedIn. His name is Jeremy Abramson of E3 Lifestyle. Jeremy, what's up, brother? How are you? Brother, I'm so well. Super grateful to be here in Miami Beach. Super grateful to be connected with you. And uh, I think I think we're going to have a beautiful conversation today and add a lot of value for your community. Awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. You would not be on the show if that was not the case. So guys, Jeremy's bio, a little bit about him is he's obviously very high energy, very inspirational coach who helps top level executives and entrepreneurs unleash their fullest potential. He is recognized around the world for his experience in mindful movement, integrative nutrition and brain chemistry. Five years after spending nine nights sleeping in his Honda CRV, he now lives in Miami Beach. His Thrive program empowers men to stop settling for mediocrity and fully unleash their potential in all areas of life. So as I always do, Jeremy, on, on the Jay Campbell podcast and previous to the Jay Campbell podcast, it was the TOT Revolution podcast, I ask all my amazing uh, guests, how did they get on the Jay Campbell podcast? Yeah, brother. So... So message, uh, shot you a message on LinkedIn, uh, I think, like you said, uh, about a month ago. Yep. And for me, as a podcast host myself, the first year of my show, I was so focused on cultivating great guests myself, right? And I understand how important it is to collaborate with people like yourself and, and add value to your community and, and co-create magic so we can really expand our reach and amplify our impact. So I'm super grateful that you were responsive and, and, and here we are now. Awesome, man. Well, um, you definitely have a lot of stuff to add. I mean, I, I've kind of blown away that you're only 29. You're about to turn 30. So we're about, as I told you before the show, I'm about to turn 50. You're about to turn 30, but you're clearly an ancient soul, wise beyond your years. Um, which is a credit to you. There's a lot of guys your age. They're nowhere near what you're doing. So, you know, mad props, as you told me, your dad was a physician. So you're kind of following your dad's healing footsteps, which is amazing. As I always say, you know, we're all stepping on the shoulders of giants. So that's pretty epic, man. But let's talk a little bit about um, your acronym THRIVE, right? You call it the six things humans need to do to thrive. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, brother. And I appreciate the kind words. Thank you so much fully receiving all of that. And you know, Jay, like most people, I spent a majority of my life just living, sure. unconscious of my thoughts, my sure. feelings, my emotions. And, and, and I feel like this is the way that most people navigate through life. Absolutely. And going through the motions and never really unleashing their potential or recognizing their purpose. And you know, if you look at the stats, the average American is 20 pounds overweight, they're 10K in debt, at least. They're depressed and they dislike their job. So I say fuck being average. And I don't know about you, Jay, but I want to be anything but average. I want to, uh, I don't want to settle for mediocrity. I don't want to just survive. I really want to thrive. And, you know, after studying and learning from some of the top teachers and practitioners in the world, you know, Joe Dispenza, Wim Hof, Don Miguel Ruiz, and you know, experimenting with uh, shamans in Peru and different plant medicines, I discovered that there's really these six components to living your dream life. Are you ready to hear them? Yes, sir. All right, beautiful. And I'm just going to preface this to everyone listening and Jay as well, that, uh, that I am very passionate. Um, so sometimes I just like talk and ramble. So Jay, just give me like... <laughs> Don't just, worry, bro. I'll pull you back. I will okay, perfect. reel you in if that happens, but I'm not afraid. Get, get, get doing it. Perfect, brother. So, so T is for thoughts. 
And like Jay and I were talking earlier, you know, we have 60,000 of these things every single day. And 90% of these thoughts that you have today are the same exact thoughts you had yesterday. So a lot of people are filled with toxic thoughts that involve them ruminating in the past, which I like to call rear view mirror syndrome. And, and we were speaking about this also, Jay, you know, these toxic thoughts, these traumas cause inflammation on a cellular level. And by perpetuating and dwelling on the past, you're going to get those same average results. So I think that's why you see depression being so prevalent, especially in this country, is because, again, so many people are dwelling on the past and they're, they're worried about what's coming next. Hey, when am I going to be able to travel again? When am I going to uh, be able to get back to work? And understand that both of these thought patterns are fear-based. And when you're operating from fear, your levels of stress hormone like cortisol, they skyrocket. And this fight or flight approach weakens your immune system, right? And literally causes inflammation to the body. So uh, I, think, I, I think at this point, it's pretty much known that disease stems from inflammation. And inflammation can come in the form of you know, shitty food. It yep. can come in the form of shitty relationships and as well as toxic, uh, shitty thoughts. You know, Absolutely. all of these things uh, manifest into uh, inflammation in the body. So, so rather than just like say the problem and, and, and say everything going wrong, you know, I always like to offer solutions. So, so, you know, a couple things that people can do right now, listening, if you really want to preserve your mental health and peace of mind is to stop watching so much of the news because listen, I understand it's important to under, to, to be aware of what's going on your, in, in your community, but understand that when you're operating from these survival emotions, like fear and anxiety and scarcity, that's going to really impact every other aspect of your life. It's going to impact your feelings and emotions, your habits and behaviors. So the second piece of advice I want to offer people is to really create some sort of affirmation that you say before you go to bed. Uh, because oftentimes your first thought in the morning is going to be the same as your last thought at night. So what I personally like to say, you know, before I go to bed is I say a prayer, just thanking, thanking the creator for gifting me another day. And also just reminding myself how abundant the world is, how blessed I am to be able to share my gifts with the world and, and be able to have full control over my internal environment. And that gets me in a state where I feel like uh, nothing externally can really phase me or shift my perspective. Um, and then finally, you know, it's, it's important to remember that, again, our thoughts manifest into yeah. feelings and emotions, and those feelings and emotions create our habits. Yeah. So we can jump into habits. Um, I wanted to see, obviously, Jay, if you had anything to chime in about thoughts. Yeah, no, no. Well, for sure. You know, as I was telling you off air, I mean, I think it's like perfectly apropos that you and I are having this discussion today. There are no coincidences in the divine mind of God's universe. And, you know, I put this up on Twitter yesterday, so I'm going to share the screen real quick, but this is exactly what I said. So I'll just share it real quick and I'll just read it. But all disease comes from inflammation due internally manifested stress from past and current life trauma, not yet integrated. At base essence, you're not a body, but you're vibrating electrons, spirit. Knowing how to integrate your trauma heals your body and optimizes your aging. So it's so funny that we're talking about that because that's exactly right. And it doesn't matter what adjuvants, a physician, a coach, you know, anybody gives a person until that person, you know, takes it under their, you know, as an initiative to understand that they are worthy and they are love and that they are capable of both giving and receiving love. Um, you know, nothing you and I can really do is going to help them. So again, I see the world right now shifting in a lot of ways um, from a standpoint, especially like in the allopathic medicine world, where a lot of people are starting to embrace people like you, listening to people like me, um, because the modalities that we teach are more about the integration of emotions. 
and understanding, like you just said, that quantum physics dictates everything, right? Like your thoughts become things, right? Just so as I always say, right, you have to make your thoughts conscious, your ideas focused, your actions massively, lovingly intentional, right? So, because all those things are going to lead back to whatever reality you want to create. So, I mean, you kind of said all those things already. So, I'm just kind of reiterating. Um, but no, I mean, proceed, you know, down the same path, keep talking about the acronym. Yeah, for sure, brother. Appreciate it. And just to give people like a quick, a quick story about myself, you know, where I was really aware of like, holy shit, these thoughts from the past, from childhood really manifest in interesting, profound ways. You know, I did a personal development workshop, uh, about a year ago now. And after one of the nights, the, the head instructor said, all the men have to come back tomorrow with out their beards. And on the drive home, I was like, what the fuck? Like, who is this woman to tell me to shave my beard? Like, I'm not doing it. I'm not even going to come back tomorrow. And, and I was like, dude, Jeremy, why do you have so much resistance about shaving your facial hair, man? Like, it's not a big deal. It's going to grow back. And as I was looking in the mirror, I just remember like seeing the baby faced me, you know, growing up and I would constantly get called. And my dad would constantly get called when I was younger, you know, elementary school, middle school, my teachers would call my dad and say, you know, Jeremy is a great student, but he's always talking in class. He's always disturbing the peace. And my dad would discipline me by basically putting me in my room and saying, Jeremy, you have to write. You have to learn respect and discipline. You're going to write, I will not talk in class until these three pages are completely filled. And I remember doing this. And I think basically subconsciously by doing that so much in my childhood, I told myself that my voice didn't matter. And, uh, and how did that manifest, you know, in high school and college and even beyond college, I didn't share my voice. There are so many times I wanted to share things and stand up for what I believed in. And I did it because, you know, I made up this story that my voice didn't matter. Right. And I just encourage people to really like, if there's a limiting belief or thought that's constantly perpetuating right now, like try to find the root of it and that'll give you power to take ownership over it and really uh, change that narrative and, and reverse the paradigm. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that. Hopefully it added, you know, a little more uh, perspective and context to how these moments in time stemming from our childhood can have such a big impact on us later in life. Uh, H is for habits. So as you know, I know your buddies with James Clear, you know, he wrote a whole book on habits and, you know, we need to remember that motivation is great. You know, you can hunt down all of the Tony Robbins, all the Gary V. I love both of them so much. You can hunt down for their YouTube video, their Instagram video. And remember that motivation is going to get you started, but habit is what's going to keep you going. Right. And, and there's a lot of books and research around habits. You know, the college of London says it takes 66 days to form a new habit. I personally think that's bullshit. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know it do doesn't take you 66 days to learn how to make your bed or brush your teeth or right, right. type of things. You know, if you're committed to something and you have the systems in place, you can make it a habit much sooner. So one of the things I tell my clients is because we're stacking habits, right? A lot of times, and I know you talk about this, is we're all about instant gratification. Right. And a lot of the things that we do, it's because we want that quick dopamine hit in the present moment and understand that, things like watching porn or all the notifications from social media or, uh, or, or drugs and alcohol, those are giving you a quick hit of dopamine, yep. but it's very temporary and they're all causing distress uh, in the long term. Right. So how, how, how can we actually get those dopamine hits in a healthy way? Right. And, and it's just about stacking these small habits you know, and, and really manifesting that momentum. So I tell my clients, you know, the first week might be unbearable. The second week might be uncomfortable, but that third week you're going to be fucking unstoppable. Yeah. And, and just a, a couple more tips for people listening. You know, I, I, I see a lot of people trying to add these massive habits all at once. They try waking up at 5 a.m., doing CrossFit, doing keto, and eliminating sugar all in the same week. No. 
<laughs> and, and understand that that might get you results for a week or two, but it's not sustainable. Right. So, so start off with something small. Uh, this will put you in position to succeed and give you the conf confidence to continue rolling forward. Um, and then, and then lastly, to finish up on habits, you know, like we spoke about as well, every action is tied to a feeling or emotion. Right. So, so the reason that you're eating that ice cream and I love ice cream, the reason you're eating that pizza, I love pizza, but understand the reason you're probably doing it is because it's tied to a feeling or emotion. Maybe, you know, you used to get rewarded for getting A's on your report card with cupcakes or with Funyuns and you've associated that certain food as, uh, as, as happiness, as love, as affection. And, and understand that all your actions are tied to a feeling or emotion. So if you're struggling to adopt some of these healthy habits, you know, think about how are you going to feel after that 10 minute stretch in the morning? You know, how are you going to feel the next day if you go to bed a little bit earlier and shut off your electronics? Again, tying all of these actions and behaviors to feelings and emotions will really put you in a position to be consistent and take ownership of your day. Very, very, very cool. Um, there's a lot of things I would, I could go back to you, what you just talked about, but let's just, let's just forward ahead and talk about some more cool stuff. I mean, you, you, you're talking about, you want to talk about overdosing on free drugs, but before we go there, I want to talk a little bit about your experience because you mentioned it a little bit using plant medicine. Um, you know, we don't have to go super deep. That could be a whole nother show and stuff like that. But like, how did, cause again, you're a young guy, you know, and most people today are scared shitless of doing that. You know, I have a ton of peers who are very successful people, business people, you know, worth eight figures, nine figures who won't do it because they're too afraid. You know, they live in apprehension, anxiety, and you know, without going down like a deep metaphysical lecture about, you know, there's nothing to fear, right? Cause death doesn't exist. You and I are dreaming this right now. Um, you know, how did you go down that path and what, how did it shape you to be the guy that you've become? Cause obviously you're very inspirational the way you speak again, bro. You're not even 30. I've worked with a lot of guys your age and younger who are nowhere close to being like with your presence and your state of being. So like, how did plant medicine help you on your path to where you're at right now? I appreciate the words, man. I really do. Jay. Um, so I first heard about ayahuasca probably, you know, three years ago from my mentor, one of my mentors, Aubrey Marcus, uh, who founded on it. Yeah, I'm familiar with Aubrey. Actually, Aubrey and I were just together at Dr. Um, Stickler's uh, conference right before everything exploded. We oh, were amazing. literally right there in Austin on March, fuck, I think the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Yeah, he, he spoke. He was like the guest speaker. And so like I had never met him in person, but I met him at the show and stuff. And we, or not the show, but the conference. And he, his doctor is Dr. Stickler. And Dr. Stickler and I are really good friends. But that's cool, man. That's awesome. I didn't know he was your mentor. Beautiful. Cool. Yeah. And, and, and one of, uh, you know, it was like two summers ago. Uh, exactly, actually. It was two Julys ago. And I was just feeling super overwhelmed with everything that I wanted to create in the world. You know, I was already creating some momentum and doing some interesting, cool things. However, I felt like I was so overwhelmed with all of these things because I didn't have the organizational capacity and these systems in place that I do now. And I felt like I just needed something to really wake me up. And I've, they say, you know, when you do plant medicines, you, you kind of feel called to it. And that's exactly how I felt. It was something, I actually had another trip planned and I canceled that trip completely. I went to Peru after researching kind of some of the top places. Dude, I have, I literally have like that, the one with the puma and the serpent. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like that exact same one, like in my living room. That's so um, awesome, dude, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so, so for me, it was something that I felt called to and of course there's always going to be fear because again you're stepping into the unknown there's yeah. so much uncertainty and especially when you hear people talk about it and you hear their stories and and all of these things but for me i was just seeking clarity sure. um and i had heard a lot of 
people talk about how it really transformed them. Yeah. So for me, I mean, just to quickly speak about the biggest takeaways for me, it was like, oh my gosh, I have so much love in my life, so much unconditional love Maybe, with my yeah. family. Yeah. And, you know, at the time, my brother's been on his own journey. I have one brother who's five years older and, you know, we hadn't really been a huge part in each other's life because he was kind of going through his own struggles and uh, distanced himself a little bit. And, and it really, I've never felt that level of compassion before. I literally like felt as if I was my brother suffering through some of the things he had suffered through. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've lacked this compassion. I need to really reach out to him and, and, and get this relationship back in the last two years have been amazing. It's been such an amazing journey to like get my brother back and our whole family is closer than it's ever been. And, and it also, one of the big messages, the second one that I'll share um, is that it really, the medicine showed me like, dude, your voice is so powerful. You need to step into that power more and, and start sharing, start storytelling. And it was shortly thereafter, man, where like, I really started to take my content to the next level. I started my podcast and I really don't think any of those things would have taken place uh, if it weren't for my journey. And then, you know, I, I also microdose with psilocybin pretty sure. regularly. So uh, that's been something great for me. Again, as the son of a neurologist, I'm always researching, Hey, of course. what are the, what are the effects of this on the brain? And actually most research, you know, before, Richard Nixon categorized psilocybin as, uh, uh, I believe, like it's called like a stage four narcotic along with yes. heroin and crack. Right. You know, uh, it was actually one of the most uh, widely used things in therapeutic settings with Absolutely. PTSD. And, and it's so unfortunate that it, there's a 40 year, 50 year hiatus of research. Right. You know, but I'm, I'm so grateful that there's a lot of great people in that space now who, who are going through the FDA to get this stuff so it can be widely used. Um, so that's just also really helped me drop into flow, yeah. connect me more with nature in the present moment. And um, yeah, th- those tools have helped me a lot. And I never push any of them on anyone. Sure, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, my business partner um, with my supplement company with the steer is, you know, one of the smart, as I tell people, like one of the smartest biochemical engineers on earth. So Nick really heavily has studied, um, microdosing, you know, LST, um, you know, um, obviously, um, mushrooms, um, psilocybin, you know, all the different variant variants of them. And like, he's got me really deep into it. And there's actually a variant of LSD, which very few people know about, which I probably shouldn't mention on the show, but who cares at this point? which is 1P. Have you ever used 1P? I haven't. Oh, dude, we'll have to talk off air about that because that is, my friend, the most next level. Like, I got, like, all the guys now. Like, probably, maybe Aubrey may know of it now. But, like, anyway, a lot of people didn't know about it. And Nick was kind of like, wow, I thought everybody knew about it. I'm like, no, dude, we're not all micro nerds like you. But, I mean, anyway, I'll talk to you about that. But that's so cool, dude, because, like I said, man, I'm a big believer in plant medicine. Never used ayahuasca, but I've used – uh, MEO three times now in my life. It totally changed my life. Literally, it changed my life. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It took me, I had the same experience as you, uh, dark night of the soul to pure unconditional love. Um, you know, when I went to Peru, which is last summer, last July, actually, same time, bro. Like I had my Facebook message this morning saying, last year at this time, you were walking through the sacred, sacred valley. But um, we didn't use, we didn't do any um, ceremonies. There was no shamanic but we did hire an indigenous guide um, at Lake Titicaca who was, dude, we did ceremonies on the lake with nothing, right? Just faith and just sheer knowing. And it was just unbelievable. But the energy of, as you know, of the Sacred Valley is unlike probably any place on earth. I, the only other place that has that type of vibrational energy is inside the Ascension Temple in Luxor, in the pyramid at least that I've experienced in my life. So there's just nothing like it. But just back to your story, I think it's awesome that at your age, again, you're able to talk about trauma and talk about plant medicine, talking about unconditional love, because like, man, there's a lot of people out there right now. You know, we're talking, this podcast is on July 16th. Whenever this runs, it'll probably be later in the year, which will probably be even more perfect and not coincidental. But 
um, a lot of people at your age, bro, who are disenchanted right now, you know, running around in the streets, protesting, whatever, whatever they're doing. And it's like, that's all just unintegrated trauma. And, you know, it's awesome. I mean, you can really be a leader to me, you know, at least in my opinion, you know, for, for people around your age to, to really look at their life and to do a, a personal, you know, internal assessment to recognize that, as you said, you know, that they're, they're worthy and that they're loved and that whatever has happened to them that they, you know, at this point begrudge or have, you know, victim, as I call it, the victimhood vibration, that can all be overcome, but it does take a concerned conscious effort of internally becoming self, you know, aware, right. And examining what it is that is truly that block or that obstacle or that event that happened to them. You already said it, you know, everything happens to us early in our life. And it's a recognition of that at some point in your life. And as you know, Jeremy, a lot of people, they never recognize it. I, you know, I know, we know plenty of people in our families, our close friends who are in their 60s and 70s and 80s, and they're still living in pure survival. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it doesn't happen for everybody, but more and more people like you and I, we keep talking about this. You work with your clients. We do podcasts. I'm going to come on your show. And this is the kind of message that has to get out into the communities because it's a resonant coherent frequency and people yeah, need to understand that it's okay to commiserate it's okay to give it up and to self-reflect and admit that hey man i gotta overcome this you know i stunted developmentally at seven or at nine or at five and i've never been able to recover this and I, it's okay as a 40 year old person or as a 30 year old person or as a 75 year old person to basically say, okay, I want to cure this now. I want to clean this up. I want to integrate this. How can someone help me? For sure, brother. I think that's really well said. And like you said, awareness is the most important part because once you become aware of something, then you really have the ability to take action, to create yeah. habits, to take ownership and, and, and to make changes. And, you know, I always, I always reference it to being, like peeling back an onion. Exactly. You know, what happens when you peel an onion? You, you cry, you tear up. Yep. It's, it's, it's painful almost. And when you peel back the layers of your identity, of your ego, of, yep. your, of your consciousness, then you also face some darkness. You face totally. your shadows. You, you gain a better understanding of, of why you're operating the way you are. And that is scary but it's also extremely empowering because it gives you the ability to change and evolve yeah yeah no 100 percent. No, i mean most people are afraid of really it's the the fear of the finite limitation aspect of existence right so it's death but it's like literally i'm not going to have enough time Right, because everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people are focused on the past and the future, right? And you and I both know that the only thing that even exists is the zero moment of now, right now. You and me in this conversation, in this space, this is the only thing that matters because it's really the only thing that's happening. There is no tomorrow or yesterday, it's gone. But so many people live their life based on what might happen or what could happen or what should happen or what, you know, they're always in the hood of coulda, shoulda game instead of just like, hey man, all you got is now make the most of it, be positive, be, you know, happy, be excited, be exuberant, you know, share, serve, be kind, concerned, compassionate, loving, all those things, service. And I guess it's just, it's as simple as you and I can dispel it right now in a conversation between two very high vibrational beings. It's not that simple in the general public, especially as you said earlier, like when people are so sucked in to this. For sure. For sure, brother. Yeah, man. And, and, you know, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. And just to, just to kind of, I, I know we're a little short on time. So I'm no, gonna, bro, you got as much time as you want. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. And hopefully, hopefully if you're listening right now, you know, I do want to, I do want to encourage you. It's so easy to listen to a podcast or to an audio book and like have a divine download, right? Oh my totally. gosh. Like, like I, I hear that, I see that, I want to apply that. And then we forget about it five minutes later. So right. I really want to encourage people listening, you know, to, to not just let this stuff go in one ear and out the other, really absorb it, 
and, and, you know, share with Jay and I message us, you know, tag me in your story on Instagram at coach Jeremy 305 and let, let us know what your biggest takeaway was. Let us know what you're going to implement from this show into your life. And, and that's a great way to obviously, you know, hold yourself accountable, but also, you know, Jay and I would love that as well to know that you're getting value from this. Um, so again, T thoughts, H habits, R is for relationships. And, you know, we've all heard the expression, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, or your network is your net worth, right? And, and these are both very true statements. However, if we want, if we want these robust relationships in our life, we need to make sure that we are attracting the energy and vibration we want to. And in order for that to happen, we need to invest in the relationship with ourselves. And the best relationships are built on respect, trust, love, generosity. And you can't give those things to others if you don't give them to yourself. So to build up that relationship with yourself, it requires action. And you need to address your thoughts, your emotions, your habits, and make sure that they're in alignment with the type of relationships you want to attract. And, you know, I always, I always reference why my, my one friend and I don't say his name obviously, but I have my one buddy who is so fucking picky when it comes to women. And he's like, bro, you know, I see her with all these like fitness influencers and, and different, like pretty girls creating different content and stuff. Like hook me up with one. He's like, I really. <laughs> He's like, I really just want a girl, man, who, who works out every day, who takes care of her health, who can cook well, who's kind, who's funny, who has a good family. And I'm like, okay, bro, like I get it. And, and, and I'm like, but dude, look at yourself right now. You've been watching SportsCenter for three hours with one hand in a bag of Doritos and one fondling your balls. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm like, first of all, bro, like sports aren't even going on right now. I don't know how you're watching so much SportsCenter. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm like, dude, you're not embodying the things you want to attract. And exactly. you know, the law of attraction is basically you attract what you are, yep. you know, and it all starts with you. So for those listening, like look yourself in the mirror and be honest with yourself. How are you showing up in the world? Because that's the energy and vibration you're going to attract in your life. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. That's what, you know, my wife is really big on that story that, you know, in her, before her and I met, you know, she manifested me into her existence. You know, we were both coming out of divorces. I'm not going to get into our story, but she always says that when she speaks to women, she's a lot like you on the women's side. And, you know, she's like, literally, who are you the person that you need to be to get the person that you deserve and want, right? Because you don't really deserve anything until you actually create that person that, is reflective of the life that you're living. Again, the whole quantum physics, law of attraction, law of resonance. But so many people want what they quote unquote can't have. Why, Jeremy? Because they're focused on what they don't have instead of being focused on what they want and having plans, dreams, visions, goals to get what they want. They're focused on lack or scarcity or limitation or why it's not the way they want it to. And again, it's so simple, right? All you do really have to do. And again, I you know, wrote about it, have a whole chapter in my newest book. I'm sure this is all you talk about is literally focus on what you want and then create a plan, you know, envision it, perceive it, achieve it, whatever. But you know, <laughs> you have to have a plan of getting to that point or it's never going to happen. I mean, that's literally why, you know, all the simulation theory that goes on now with all the top world's quantum physicists, they talk about like it's a giant, you know, floating, whatever you want to call it, world or a nebulous existence or a sphere or whatever, that because you do have the ability from the still um, fulcrum to consciously create anything you want. But you have to obviously work in this third dimensional realm. It's not something where you can just imagine it and have it. You actually have to build it. You have to create it. So, dude, I mean, amazing. I mean, you know, did you want to talk? I know you had some stuff about stand up the sitting and um, free drugs. Did you want to talk about those? I mean, I know we've kind of gone all over the place, but I still think it's been an awesome podcast. No, for sure, brother. So, so yeah, I mean, in regards to that stuff, you know, I just encourage people to really utilize uh, all of these free drugs that we have, you right. know, and it actually started this concept is I was going to, I was giving a talk and the night before I was like, 
you know what? I actually want to change the way that I open this talk. And uh, I got on stage and I, and I said, hey, guys, my name's Jeremy, and I'm a drug addict. And everyone was like, what the what? fuck? Yeah. Like, this dude's supposed to be a health and wellness professional. <laughs> he's telling us he's a drug addict. That's awesome. And, and, I, and I was ta just talking about, you know, how I'm addicted to free drugs, like sunshine, yeah. uh, like water, yeah, yeah. like movement, like community, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like water. All of these things that we have access to that we're so grateful to have access to. So much of the world doesn't have sanitary water to drink from or True. clean food in their fridge or a roof over their head. And, and these are things that, you know, you and I have the luxury of, of accessing every single day. So, you know, I'm sure your listeners, I know they're very educated, so they know the benefits of getting sunshine. Uh, they know the benefits of staying hydrated. So we don't need to go into the details of that. And stand up to sitting is that's the original name of my podcast. I actually have it tattooed on my wrist. Oh, nice, nice. And this is basically the the idea. You know, so many of us spend ten to twelve hours a day sitting on our ass. Yep. You know, your cortisol levels are super high. You're yep. rushing. You have your coffee. You drive to work. Right. Sit down. Then you're sitting yeah. exactly. So you're compressing your spine. Yeah. Your whole physiology is getting compressed, including your digestive organs. And not only are you destroying your, your physical body, but your mental body, because yeah. as your body moves, your brain grooves yep. and you're not going to have these creative aha moments or these new neural connections if you're sitting all day. Um, so stand up to sitting Jay is honestly, it's, it's a movement, right? It's a mindset. Like, fuck the comfort zone yeah. you know fuck just accepting sitting at my desk all day fuck staying in this limited context that i'm operating from to keep me safe and comfortable you know uh how, how can we how can we find ways to just challenge the norm and and that's what stand up to sitting is all about actually bro i'd love after this um we'll we'll, we'll connect i have these and i have something else that i want to send you awesome. so so yeah, we'll make sure that um, I get we I get your address. Well, so when but, you work with people and you go into their offices, I mean, is that part of like your coaching? Like you literally, I mean, because I watched one of your videos that you were in the you know one of the newsrooms or of one of the studios or the stations that you did a video for. You come in and teach them you know correct posture while they're sitting, and then of course to get up and take a break, or do you just be like, nah, motherfuckers, you need to get stand up desks and you need to all put them in now, and this is why. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely not the second thing that you said. You know what I've realized in my experience, you yeah. know, through my growth, through my coaching, yeah. is is don't get me wrong. There's a, some people who might who might receive that well. Yeah, of course. Uh, but but uh, you got to just work with what they give you, right? I make things as simple and digestible as possible. So I've been facilitating a ton of virtual workshops in the of last course. four months, yeah. as you can yeah. imagine. Yeah. As now all these companies are working at home. So basically, I, 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 we go over three things. It's taking your survival emotions to elevated emotions, yep. right? Then it's breathing techniques to yep. energize you or to calm you down. So, yep. so with your breath uh, shifting and impacting your nervous system. And then also simple alternative postures and positions to mitigate pain and to really improve your joint mobility and blood flow. Um, so with my one-on-one -on -one clients, we do address that uh, during week three of our program sure. is called stand up to sitting. And, and we literally like make sure that their workspace is a sacred space yeah. that serves them and, and their creativity and energy. Um, so, so that's been such a fun journey. I love, I love doing that. So, you know, if you're listening right now, and you're an entrepreneur or you have a small business or a big business and you want to really like create this culture of movement, of growth, of connection, you know, definitely reach out to me. It's something I, I love doing. Um, and then just really quickly finishing the acronym, right? We have thoughts, habits, relationships. I won't even go deep into these, but I is for intention, just infusing intention into everything sure. that we do. Yeah. Uh, uh, whether that be, you know, having a conversation with our partner before a big meeting, you know, before we got on, uh, started recording, we just took some breaths together. Yep. Uh, so, so infusing intention, right. And, uh, V is for vitality because 
energy is the most cur valuable currency you have. Yep. And if you have big dreams, big goals, big ambitions, it's going to require a lot of energy. And, you know, you get energy through movement, through nutrition, through sleep, and through your purpose. Yeah. So it all comes full circle. You know, we need to adopt the necessary habits to feed our energy levels throughout the day. Um, and unfortunately, so many people have accepted just feeling mediocre. Right. Like, hey, you know, my energy levels are low all afternoon or, or, or they, they, it's sad that they think this has to be their reality, you know? And, and then finally, E is for enthusiasm. It's one of the things that probably enrolled you in my vision and allowing me to come on your show. Yep, uh, 100%. You know, yeah, so, so I work with a lot of CEOs and founders who they really want to attract the best, best talent to their team and enthusiasm is a gateway to creating culture and enthusiasm is also contagious. Yep. Um, so it's a powerful energy, man. And it, when, when it comes down to it, people are always doing business with people and you know, people are attracted to passion and enthusiasm. And if you're enthusiastic, like you and I are, I love your energy, bro. I hope I'm there in 20 years. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will be bro. And, and, and people feel that energy and enthusi if you're enthusiastic, it's probably a good sign that you're doing something that you're passionate about and that you love. So, you know, I know I spoke a lot, but a quick recap, T is for thoughts, H is for habits, R is for relationships, I is for intention, V is vitality, and E is for enthusiasm. Jeremy Abramson of E3lifestyle.com. You are an amazing dude. How can people connect with you, work with you, you know, what's the best way for them to connect? For sure, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, so, so definitely uh, Instagram and LinkedIn are the best social platforms to reach out to me. So on Instagram, it's coach Jeremy, J E R E M Y three zero five, which is the area code out here in Miami. Uh, LinkedIn, you can just find me, Jeremy Abramson. And then my email, if you want to email me is J a at e3lifestyle.com and you know just just reach out and and let's talk let's continue the conversation and let's cultivate community beautiful man i truly appreciate you coming on the lives on coming on the podcast today and obviously for all you guys watching as always please support the amazing fine folks who come on the jay campbell podcast support their mission support their brand and if you can possibly coach with them and remember Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.